Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of videos about games and the people who played them. And now, here's your host, Joe Steadman. All right, now I'm going to be talking about the Caucus Campaign by Mark Simonich, GMT Games. It just came out. This is uh, the summer and spring of 1942 down in the Caucasus, Germans versus Russians. The uh, GMT says this is a fairly uh, complex or medium complexity game. No, this is a simple war game. All right, it's your basic uh, operational level. You're going to be controlling divisions of, of uh, troops on the attack or on the defense. As the German, uh, you're going to be attacking, trying to take a certain amount of victory points. You get those victory points by uh, taking different uh, key locations. And as the Russian, you're going to be defending and then possibly counterattacking things such as uh, terrain and uh, supply, zones of control that units exert around themselves, and things like this are all going to be factors. But it's not too fiddly. There's not a whole lot of fiddly rules in this game. It's pretty cut and dry. Um, I really like Mark Simonich. I like most of his games. Um, the production quality of this game is, is wonderful. I, I love the GMT counters and the GMT full color rules. The map is nice, and I'll show you a close up of all those. Uh, not too expensive of a game. I, I, I love the Eastern Front. That's where the vast majority of the World War II was fought, and I, I love playing these operational games from that side. This is a good, easy game that's still deep enough to enjoy. You could get it done in an evening, no problem. Um, you could play this game. There's, there's uh, the campaign game, or there's a short scenario, like a tournament scenario. You can play that's much shorter. So you could get the tournament scenario done in one evening, no problem. All right. So what does the game come with? It comes with uh, it comes with a map, a nice big full color map. It's got two charts, a bunch of counters with bags, one die, and the rules. The rules are full color with uh, really nice extended. Uh, in the back is a really nice extended example of play. It goes through a full turn and it shows you everything. And uh, full, I, I love that. I wish all games would do that. All right, let me zoom in and show you a few things. Here's a basic German unit, and uh, you know, it's just your basic combat strength, your movement allowance, defense, um, basic infantry symbol, size of the unit. But the one thing that GMT does I like is they right there in the top corner. You can see. Right up there in the top corner, you can see how they put uh, the little unit crest or the symbol of the unit. And different units will do that. Like here, like here's another one you can see, the little greyhound up there. So I just like that. I think that's a neat little touch. Here's your map. It's got the uh, basic, uh, I keep on saying basic. It's got the caucus campaigns. It's got your turn track. It shows you right when your replacements are going to come in. It's got uh, different variable replacements. The Russian player is going to roll for replacements. The German player has pretty much got them laid out. It's got little helps all over the map, different reinforcements. On the map itself, you can see you have the, the names, the train types, the roads, the rails, the victory points for different things in the city. Up here you got entry points. Um, your mountains, mountain passes, really mountainous area. It's a uh, Tim. Oh, the team in Pensinol. Isn't this where the Cross of Iron took place? One of you, the the movie The Cross of Iron. I think it took place in this area here, later on in the war. All right. Here we have a basic combat. You have sixteen German factors attacking six Soviet factors, and you can see that by the attack strength of the German versus the defense strength of the of the Russian. There, it's basic open terrain, so we don't have to worry about anything for terrain effects. So it's two to one. Um, when you reduce it down, 16 to 6 is 2 to 1, but then you get shifts. The first shift that the German's going to get is going to get for his troop quality. He has a higher troop quality than these uh, poor little Soviets. So he's going to get one troop shift, so now it's going to go to 3 to 1. And then you look at the fact that I've added the, uh, I designated the air to help out with this, so that's another troop shift. So now it's going to go to 4 to 1. And then finally you have armor. And you're going to get a bonus for using armor, so it's going to go to 5 to 1. So the basic odds would be 5 to 1. So then if you look at your handy dandy uh, combat table here, you go to the 5 to 1 chart, and you roll a die. So if you get defender retreat, the defender retreats, attacker will take a step, defender takes a step, defender takes a step. You know, So it just depends on what you roll for what will happen. Now an interesting factor here 
is they have something called a determined defense. So if the, uh, if the Russian gets a retreat result, he can actually roll on a separate table, which is uh, right here, the determined defense table, and he can roll on that to try to negate the retreat and possibly cause more damages. Uh, kind of like a determined defense would just be a hold at all costs kind of thing. So that's your basic combat in this game. And things such as crossing rivers or fighting in a town um, will all have a, a part in how you on how you fight. Sequence of play, basically the access player will go first, you will uh, place reinforcements, then you will have your, your weather roll, see what the weather is, but you know, that doesn't come in until turn seven. Then you have your, your access primary impulse, where you'll do his primary movements and um, attacks. Then you'll have the Soviets will get a chance to respond to that with their impulse, the Soviet secondary impulse, and then the Axis player will get a chance to uh, break through and do different uh, follow-ups to his turn. And then it flips and the Soviet will do his turn. The Soviet actually has a, a random events thing that he has to do at the beginning of his turn. And there's a little table you roll on such things as lend lease tanks or the flotilla that can come into play. Different random events that will happen, which is kind of neat. Supply is very simple. You just got to trace supply back to uh, an entry hex or to a railroad that will go to an entry hex. You got to go, I think, five hexes away. Um, like I said, it's, it's not very fiddly. There's a few little rules, such as like on turn 7, Hitler takes over command. And uh, it's actually, in this game, it's it's actually better Hitler takes over, when Hitler takes over command for the Germans, which is contrary to what we would normally think, because you get better supply. But um, step losses, you flip over things, you can, get, you can rebuild things, you can disrupt a unit, which would make it uh, easier or harder to, it doesn't defend as well. There's all the negative effects for being disrupted. Typical, typical uh, operational game. Um, advancing after combat, you know, mobile units, mechanized units can advance farther than infantry units. Infantry units can go one one spot and farther than that. Headquarters, just basic headquarters. They let you do certain things. If they get eliminated, they come right back again at the next turn. There's also uh, the way you win is by getting a certain amount of victory points, but there's a sudden death. In other words, if you ever get a, a certain amount of victory points on each turn, it says right on the map, the game's over. So that's kind of neat. But there's a standard victory and a sudden death victory, so it can go either way. There's a few special rules, such as uh, no step back, or not a step back for the Soviet player. Any Soviet unit that starts in a ZOC or a zone of control um, can't move. So it kind of... It kind of uh, forces the hand of the Soviet. There's uh, rebuilding Soviet units by combining them. Access withdrawals. There's just not, there's not that many special rules. I was able to set up the tournament scenario and play it through completely uh, solitaire and it, it actually made for a pretty good solitaire game because each side has a, a totally different strategy so it, it, it leads itself to solitaire play. And then I was able to play against another opponent, uh, a local guy here, a friend of mine, Kurt, and uh, it was it was it was a lot of fun. It didn't, he doesn't play very many operational games. He likes the tactical stuff, the ASL stuff. But he was willing to play with me, and it uh, it was pretty fun. We were able to play the the uh, tournament scenario in one evening on a Saturday night, and uh, didn't take us that long at all. So fun game. Not much negative I can say. It's not an often played area. It's often neglected by war gamers and history even doesn't talk too much about this whole campaign down here in the Caucasus. So it's it's interesting. Uh, I like it. I recommend it. I think you should pick it up if you like operational games. And uh, the Eastern Front is a definite uh, thing you want to have on your list. Little tease of what's coming up next. Just got this in the mail. Battle Above the Clouds. Just got it. American Civil War. Lookout Mountain. Chattanooga. This uh, always interested me, and I look forward to uh, getting this on the game table. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. 